Good evening, everybody. If you are on Pacific Standard Time, good afternoon. Uh, you are now watching or listening to or tuning into uh, Mikasa Sukasa, and I am your host, Nico House. Um, so before I get started, I do want to give an apology to YouTube. At the very last minute, my computer charger just decided to give up on all of humanity, and now my laptop has no juice. Um, so I will have to repost this <laughs> on YouTube so that you all can actually see what's, uh, what we're talking about this evening, if you're not already watching on either Facebook or, or Twitter. Um, so for Twitter, this is your second iteration of Mikasa Sukasa. For Facebook, this is like your hundred millionth uh, iteration of Mikasa Sukasa. And uh, for American Freedom Radio, it is always beautiful to be back. For those of you who have not yet, make sure you follow American Freedom Radio uh, on uh, Facebook, on Twitter, and on YouTube. I mean, and obviously go to their to their uh, radio, online radio station as well. You can go to AmericanFreedomRadio.com. Um, amazing stuff. If you like what we talk about on the regular, then you'll definitely love some of the things that you'll you're here discussed on American Freedom Radio. Uh, obviously, it's some very next level stuff, or I wouldn't be with them. So um, we have a lot to talk about. A lot of major announcements. The first major announcement for myself will be that from now until December, or essentially January, I will not be updating my YouTube and my Facebook as far as videos are concerned as regularly as I normally do. The reason why is because at my job that actually pays my bills. Um, this is the busiest time of the year for us, and so I, I will be doing my regular updates uh, and all of my commentary via American Freedom Radio. So American Freedom Radio is going to have the exclusives. This will be the, tonight or Thursday nights, every Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard, uh, 6 p.m. Pacific. If you want to hear me live and you want to hear me discuss what's, what happened during that week, that would be the time to do it. So make sure that you tune in uh, so you can hear, hear me live because I promise you it's more fun. You get to, I'm a little bit more interactive and, and you get to see me act goofy and all that good stuff. So um, like I said, make sure you follow American Freedom Radio. Make sure you share the page. Make sure you like the, the, this page, my YouTube page and, and Facebook and Twitter and all that good stuff. Now, um, uh, well, now that that's out of the way, not saying, by the way, not saying that I will never update my YouTube at any other point, but it's going to be a very, very rare occasion for breaking news. Um, but uh, yeah, so if you are watching right now, make sure you share this on Facebook if you, uh, if, if you are on Facebook. Retweet if you're on Twitter. If you're on Facebook, remember, we do hearts and likes only. If you give me angry faces... Um, we're going to have some issues because that messes up the algorithms. And speaking of Facebook al algorithms, while we're waiting for everybody to share this, let me tell you all about what Facebook did to me today, or not today, uh, over the last couple of months. So I had been noticing that on my Facebook page for my public, obviously I have my personal page and then I have my public figure page. For my public figure page, I had this weird, um, this, this, this weird phenomena where like 200, 300, even 400 people at a time were like unliking my page, but even if I hadn't been active on it or post anything controversial, which I know, believe it or not, sometimes I don't post controversial things. Sometimes I, po I post things that most of us should pretty much agree with. So um, I noticed that a lot of people had unliked my page, but weirdly enough, even though I have uh, uh, over 10,000 follows on that page, uh, I, w I was losing followers or likes at a weird rate, um, and it seemed to be sporadic and random. Now, weirdly enough, I go to check because I got new friends, and whenever I have new friends on my personal page, I like inviting them to my public figure page because I want them to know that, uh, yes, I am every bit the crazy kook you have heard about. <laughs> and <laughs> what you see on my personal page um, is only about half of what, you know, or actually really the other way around. But, you know, if you want to get the full effect of Nico, you do have to like my public figure page. And I go to invite people that have been on my friends list. And guess what I found out? Facebook had forced, I'm at my count right now, it's close to six or seven hundred of my friends. I mean, these are not regular people that I've uh, crossed you know, came across over the last couple of years. These are people that are my lifelong friends who like my page bef before I had 200 or 300 likes. 
and forced all of them to unlike my page. Essentially, losing hundreds of followers at once, which is ridiculous. And I thought, I thought that it was an accident, but then I real, I found out that it would, it had not only happened to myself, but other public figures as well. And it makes me believe that Facebook is essentially trying to force us to buy attention, even if we are generating attention by ourselves, which is absolutely, you know, ridiculous. I, I can't even believe that. This, this is why Facebook is losing its juice. They had so much, uh, you know, so much potential during the election, but clearly um, they are more concerned about money. And not only that, but it's very clear that they want to silence independence. Uh, they don't want people being able to generate an uh, income off of their website or off of their platform without having to go through them first, which is, like I said, it's, it's ridiculous. So I've actually been in the process of re-adding people and re-inviting people to my Facebook to like the page again because Facebook has worked so hard to ensure that people do not like my page. So if you are one of those people who kind of were forced to unlike my page but still follow, make sure uh, that you do go back and like that because obviously we need reactions, we need uh, awareness, and one of the ways to stay updated is either by subscribing to that page, liking the page, and, and all that good stuff. Now as far as the mailing list is concerned, uh, by the way, as you can see, we're in the housekeeping part of the show while you all share and retweet this, um, but the first... Uh, uh, email from the email list will be sent out tomorrow uh, and there's a reason I have held out for this long and I will explain why in the email tomorrow um, so if you have not you can uh, go to the email list and um, and like or add yourself to that I'll post a link within the comment section for Facebook and I'll also post the link and uh, for YouTube, I have to do that later, obviously, because they're not live right now. And then for Twitter, I will post a tweet with the um, the mailing list and how you can get in, get get uh, the updates and things like that, and add your email to that. Now, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we have a lot to discuss. Lord knows it's been. Whew, I know I say it's a crazy week every week, and every week politics does not fail to disappoint me. Now, obviously, as you all know, Donna Brazil has had some revelations. She's had forward revelations. She's had backwards revelations. She's had revelations about revelations that she had previously revelated about. She's changed her mind a lot. She seems to be confused. <laughs> so hopefully we can give some scope to what the hell Donna Brazil is trying to say. Um, and we can even speculate about why it's, um, it seems to be very difficult for her to figure out what the hell she wants to tell the American people and what she wants us to believe. Now, let's be very clear about something. I am 100% in the category of people who believe that Donna Brazil is selfish, egotistical, narcissistic, and this entire situation, for the most part, is about personal gain, gain, excuse me, and uh, self-preservation. But if you've been in politics as long as I have, you know that that's pretty much all decisions made in politics is self-preservation. <laughs> so that part did not surprise me. Now, as you all know, Donna Brazil made some interesting revelations about the Hillary Victory Fund. <gasps> Gasp. Guess what, y'all? I don't know if y'all know this, but did y'all know that the DNC has been funneling money from super PACs into Hillary Clinton's campaign. Oh my God! If only someone at some point, maybe around March of 2016, had contacted a huge media conglomerate, maybe like TYT or something to that extent. Maybe even somebody even more specific who was working directly for Bernie Sanders' campaign at the time, like Jordan Sheraton, not trying to be too specific, but just specific enough, you know, if maybe, maybe somebody should have did that. Maybe someone should have called Jordan Sheraton and TYT after he had talked to Chris Telesco, who was a former treasurer for the North Carolina Democratic Party, who had informed me, I mean, that person who should have did that, 
during his investigations or hers investigations while he was at Beck and Lee legal office or maybe Lee and Beck. We don't know for a fact because it didn't actually happen, right? We're still pretending that it didn't happen. So maybe, just maybe, when he talked to Chris, to Chris Teleska, I mean, for example, of that treasure, that treasure, former treasure, and he said, hey, this is how the Clintons are funneling money through state parties. And he told me it was called the Hillary Victory Fund. And the reason that he had found out that they were using it for state parties is because we asked, they tried to set up some type of PAC, um, very similar to that in North Carolina, and they wanted, they, it was gonna be called the Victory Fund just by coincidence, and they refused to allow it to be called the Victory Fund because they didn't want the two to be confused. Essentially, they didn't want progressives accidentally getting money they didn't they shouldn't have had. So anyway, so you know, maybe, just maybe, this that this guy, you know, if he just happened to be investigating into corruption with the campaign, if he just happened to tell TYT, tell Jordan Sheraton, and some other people, uh, that all of this had gone down, then just maybe. We could have started holding people accountable a lot earlier. Maybe, just maybe, maybe I'm being, I'm being too, uh, too optimistic. Uh, the reason that I'm bringing this up is because, uh, if you can't tell by now, I'm being extremely sarcastic. I actually did tell Jordan Sheraton in the very beginning. And why am I upset about how the revelations have come about? I'm not upset that Donna Brazil was the one who broke this news. I kind of expected it to come out eventually um, because like I said, self-preservation. Now, what I am upset about is how Jordan and TYT and, and, uh, and all those little cool people at that little major media conglomerate who just took all that Clinton money and we're supposed to believe that no, no influence on their decisions at all. How there, we told y'all Oh my God, of course they were cheating. We knew that. We've been saying this from the very beginning. Let's hold them accountable now. Really? Really, people? Really? Come on. Like, it's getting old. Because at a certain point, you have to stop pretending. Because people are going to start calling you out for it. And like I said... I don't really give a damn anymore if people think I'm being petty, if they think I, I, oh, you're just being divisive and you're punching left. No, what I am doing, ladies and gentlemen, is something that TYT pretends they are doing all the time, right? Because if TYT wants to hold, call out CNN regularly, all their journalists, or if they want to call out, uh, you know, MSNBC, or even Fox News, or other journalists, or independent journalists even, you know, they're just holding those journalists accountable, right? But when we do it, we call them out. We hold them accountable for their donations. When we hold them accountable for you, cause, cause this was the reason. I'm gonna tell you all the reason for why they didn't want to actually tell the world what I had already told them. As I stood inside Jared and Liz's office on the phone with Jordan, they told me there was no smoking gun. And in my head, I'm like, FEC documents? That's not a smoking gun? FEC doc, I mean, cause it, it wasn't just, it wasn't just like a, you know, like, okay, man, it's some really coincidental stuff going on. It wasn't like that. It was like, yo, you need to look at this. We're having it confirmed. And in one, even one scenario, there was actually um, a situation where one of the people on Bernie Sanders campaign, she was a state director, signed off on the whole Hillary Victory Fund, uh, you know, money laundering situation in Vermont before she joined cam the campaign for Bernie Sanders. And of course, this also turned out to be one of the ones who was firing people and leaving them out in the cold after the state election or the primary had been ta had taken place. So, now, it's a little weird to me because once again, you had every opportunity to put this information out. You had every opportunity to make this information public. I didn't even ask for credit. I didn't even want credit. To this day, I still could give a damn about the credit. I don't care about that. What I actually care about 
is making sure I, I'm a very people who know me. I'm a very preventative person. I'm a very proactive person and I'm a very solution based person. This was before I became a radio show host. This was before there was any chance of me in my mind or anyone else's mind being, you know, speaking at events. Uh, I mean, doing everything that I've done after that. Like, yes, all that's cool. Good stuff. Great. Shout out to America Freedom Radio. Shout out to Rick Radio. I appreciate the opportunity to be a radio show host, but that wasn't what that was about. This man had working next to Bernie Sanders, mind you, had every opportunity. TYT had every opportunity to call out what we had already told them, what we had already given them significant information on. And they didn't. And they look at their their, uh, fan base and their supporters and their face and all of a sudden, we told you so. No, we told you so. And I'm not going to, there's a whole team of investigators that also never got credit. Now, when I say never got credit, I mean their research was not um, rewarded by being shown in the news because they, they put a lot of work into that. We had a team together. We had a team that was dedicated hours, hours on the phone, hours on a phone call. I was not, I mean, literally sleeping on my brother's couch in the middle of the night answering phone calls on the phone, one, two, three, four, five o'clock in the morning, getting up, going to the office, doing the same thing again. There was no smoking gun at that time. There's literally one thing that's changed in that, and it was just that Donna Brazil said, oh, I saw, I have proof now. There was an agreement and I saw it. We haven't even seen the actual agreement itself yet. The actual like agreement other than a couple of uh, blurbs from that agreement, we haven't even seen that yet. I sh- I, we gave them FEC documents, people. This is a classic example of profiting off of chaos and fear. They want the world to be plummeted into chaos because it's clicks. Once again, like I said, this is the same company who said there was not a smoking gun, but have been touting the Russia conspiracy off of a retracted New York Times article. This is the same company who says that there was no smoking gun, gun, excuse me, to condemn the election fraud and the money laundering that we saw through the Hillary Victory Fund and through Priorities USA. This is the same company that said that. But when Fusion GPS and all that information came out that said Clinton is actually the one who's linked to Russia, oh, buddy, you know what? If Clinton committed this Uranium One deal, then we know exactly what happened. It means that Trump was probably behind her, probably holding a gun in the back of her head and told her to do it. That's how TYT vets their information. This is important. Because we are entering 2020 much sooner than what we think. And when we are looking for authorities in journalism, when we are looking to where we should go next, TYT was huge. And really, to be totally honest, they, they do have a debt of service. No, you know what? Fuck that. It was Jimmy. We love Jimmy. We still love Jimmy. Shout out to Jimmy Dore. We love you, man. It was you. You was the one up here debating these fools about Clinton. It still ain't shit. I hate her. We hate her. We're on the same team. We don't even like them. We never even like Shane. We always be like, man, if he didn't like, if he didn't like Bernie, that dude's a pompous ass. I don't even like him. We wouldn't even, we wouldn't even watch this show if it wasn't for Jimmy. And the same holds true today. Jimmy is holding their entire show together. Shout out to Jimmy Dore. Much love for you, bro. Um, but you should leave. Come on, to the, come, come on, come on, we should do a show together, Jimmy. Old white guy, young, good looking, handsome, well dressed, well spoken, you know, black guy. You know, it sounds like a good gimmick, right? Come on, Jimmy, let's do it. But <laughs> in all seriousness, people, it's extremely important to vet the people that we are getting our information from, especially if they claim to be on our side. We have learned this from Hillary Clinton, and we should probably 
continue to learn this going forward. Now, what's come of this, obviously, is Donna Brazil going back and forth. But like I said, I kind of figured that was going to happen. I Going back and forth, it's what Donna Brazil does. Remember? Corrupt DNC, it's what they do. Now, what I did not personally expect that took place was the fact that Donna Brazil actually dedicated her book, amongst other people, like her family and her coworkers, to Seth Rich. That's a little weird. It's a little peculiar. And it's not peculiar just because it was like some kind of, um, like, uh, like just casual, you know, he passed away and, uh, and we want to make sure that we pay respects because he, he was on my staff at that time. That's not, <laughs> it wasn't that. It was, oh, I want to, this book is dedicated to Seth Rich, the Patriot. Ladies and gentlemen, not Seth Rich, that guy who worked for the DNC. Seth Rich, the Patriot. Now, what makes Seth Rich any more of a quote unquote Patriot? We know why. But what in her mind makes Seth Rich any more of a Patriot than any of her other staff members? Maybe it has something to do with the fact that after Seth Rich passed away, uh, and which we recently found out in her book, she Donna Brazil said that she had been looking out of her blinds or staying away from her blinds, worried that she was going to be killed by sniper fire. Wait a minute. We thought this was a botched robbery, ladies and gentlemen. We thought this was a botched robbery. Now understand something. People forget, I have a really good memory. I have a lot of, I have a memory bank full of things that have been said in the past by some very important people. One by the name of Special Private Investigator Rod Wheeler. And he made it pretty clear that Donna Brazil and Seth Rich did not get along. In fact, Seth Rich had personal issues with Donna Brazil. In fact, whenever Rod Wheeler called Donna Brazil to discuss the Seth Rich murder, she was, hmm? Didn't want to talk. Didn't want to talk about it at all. In fact, as soon as she he called her, she called the police department and she called Seth Rich's parents trying to figure out why Rod Wheeler was prying. So clearly, there is much more to that story than what she wants to let on. Now, we have to figure out at this point, why the hell did she go out of her way to mention Seth Rich in the way that she did? Why, once again, this is me saying uh, hypothetically why, because I know why he's a patriot, and it's because he is. He helped to release revelations that we probably never would have known concretorially unless he didn't make the sacrifice that he did. Now, with that being said, is she trying to save herself? Of course she is. But the question is from what? Are people getting closer to finding out truths and revelations uh, that she is trying to essentially admonish herself from? She's trying to say, look, when this all comes down and we know it will, we should, uh, I, I sh y'all should know I thought Seth Rich was a hero. I just want everybody to know that. Now, of course, it's also the monetary stuff, right? Because obviously her book like sold out <laughs> and then Hillary's book is getting sent back to the publisher because it can't sell. <laughs> Whew. Man, she's just as popular as she was in the 2016 election. Oh, yeah. I bet you the only place the book sold out was in California and New York. <laughs> hey, but she won the popular vote. Ah. Yeah, anyway. But <laughs> in all seriousness, what I want to know, because we can't really know, but it's it's very curious to me. Um, it's it's peculiar because she didn't need to do that. She didn't need to. Why bring Seth Rich back into the spotlight unnecessarily when it could potentially damage your credibility? We know what we know from Rod Wheeler. We already know those who have been paying attention. 
Maybe because there is some legitimacy to her fears. Because, I mean, think about it like this. Once Donna Priscilla released something, by the way, that was public information. This Hillary Clinton shit, the Hillary Clinton Victory Fund stuff was public information on the FEC documents. It had already been released, already been talked about by myself, by political, even TYT. They just kind of stole the story, broke it. After I told Jordan, never gave me credit, but whatever, that's neither here nor there, okay? <laughs> but they knew, at the very minimum, the world had known about Hillary Clinton Victory Fund. So why is it a big deal? Why, why even come out and say that? Because, like I said, it happened in March, this story broke. But all of a sudden, Donna Brazil is a traitor, she's a liar, that never happened. But it happened in March! How are people in the Democrat? But it took this much for them to switch on her ass. That quick, it was that quick. I don't know how quick that, quick. It was super quick. Put that, however quick that snap was, half that. That's how quick they switched on her. Man, and the racist tweets start coming out immediately. And then, shit, believe it or not, I actually started to feel bad for her. Because I actually can understand the same thing that Nina had talked about, being out on that plantation. When she said, we're not on that plantation anymore. Black people have to sell out regularly to the Democratic Party because they will ensure, because at the end of the day, yeah, the Democratic Party, the Democratic Party, but there's more of us, or less of us, than there are of them. Uh, if I had white skin, I would do it on this side, but you get the gist of what I'm trying to say. And so, over time, you sell out enough, and, uh, the chickens come to roost, and that's what happened to Donna Brazil. You sell out enough, karma comes back. And I actually, like I said, I felt bad for because look what happened. When Hillary Clinton disappeared, Debbie Washington Schultz under federal investigation. I mean, do I really need to go down that list? They didn't care. They did not care. At all. Donna Brazil comes out and literally says something that's public information. Not only is it public information, but it's forever logged in FEC files. And they're like, ah, this traitorous witch. How dare she tell the truth about our party? We only cheated a little bit. I mean, pretty much what we did was, for the most part, kind of legal. How dare she? <laughs> How dare she what? She just is like, yeah, I mean... What they're saying happened actually happened. And this, we already talked about this. I'm just kind of reaffirming it. They switched on her. So there's probably some sincerity to what Donna Brazil had to say. Because I bet whenever she lost her job and things didn't go the way she thought it would, she probably got left out in the cold. And when people get left out in the cold, well, health hath no fury like a woman scorned. Especially a black woman. Who has a lot of money to make via book sales. <laughs> so, with that being said, I do want to transition because I'm sure you all have heard. This is probably what most of you have been waiting for. Well, I don't know. It depends on what you're here for. But all my political heads that have been paying attention, Bernie Sanders has said less than 10 hours ago, if he were to run in 2020, if he were to run, he would be running as a Democrat. Now, many of you want to know what my opinion is about that statement. Actually, that's fine. I really don't care. If, I'm not going to talk about my opinion about it. Let's look at it from a strictly factual, strategy-based standpoint. This is my interstate director. This is my inner organizer. This is someone who has been in the field, been in the trenches, been on the, in the Green Party, been the, the Democrat, well, never, I actually never, I never have been registered Democrat, believe it or not. Um, but I've worked, obviously, on Bernie Sanders' campaign. I've worked with Democrats. And I was, t <laughs> funny enough, I don't know if this is actually able to happen, but I was actually uh, in the African American Caucus of North Carolina. I was actually one of the youngest members. I think I was the youngest member at the time. And I was not actually a Democrat. I don't know if that was allowed, but I managed to finesse it. But long story short, many of you want to know how I feel about him running as a Dem. And they're going to say, uh, some things are legitimate. 
we should be worried. Yes, absolutely. True. He could be cheated again. Yes, absolutely. True. Except for, there's a lot of things that have changed since last election. Now, I have said for quite some time, Bernie is running in 2020. I've said that almost from the moment that he didn't, at the moment that he walked away, actually, and suspended the rules that day, and he walked off looking as pissed as, and, and as let down as anyone could have ever looked in that sort of situation. And I said for, to people that I think he's running again. And I, a couple of days, a couple of weeks, excuse me, passed. And for some reason, the man was all on the television screens. All on television screens. And then uh, the man was, was talking about Russia. And I was pissed because he was towing that line, that, that establishment line for the Democrats. But he would only, I would notice a, a weird pattern. I was like, he would say, okay, if Putin hacked the elections, then he needs to be held accountable. But that's not why they lost. It was Debbie Washington Schultz and the Democrats. The Democrats lost the election. I was like, it, it kept happening. I, I said, okay. So then when the situation with Syria happened, they put Bernie Sanders on the front line again. And I wasn't pleased with his initial responses for Syria either. He said, if Assad had used chemical weapons, he's a war criminal, um, he needs to be held accountable, but we do not need to go to the Middle East and cause another quagmire. We need to handle our business here at home, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, then Bernie Sanders introduced that legislation exposing Cory Booker, if you all recall. And then, um, I mean, we can go, he obviously started our revolution. And although initially I didn't, I wasn't really fond of it, Nina Turner eventually was put in charge. And I said, okay, well, let's see what happens next. And Nina Turner comes out and says, oh, we're not endorsing Democrats only. We're not on the plantation anymore. Her words. If you're progressive, you will be endorsed. And she has stayed true to that word as they have gotten plenty of Green Party people elected. They've gotten plenty of, they have gotten mayors elected. Uh, um, oh my goodness, I cannot remember the guy's name now. For Maryland, Governor of Maryland. Um, forgive me, because I can't think of his name right now. But, uh, you know, I think New Jersey, the, the governor now, who, who's the governor of New Jersey, I want to say he was endorsed by our revolution. Candidates, I mean, they had a lot of victories and a lot of people of color um, that were elected. Uh, now, just the Democrats, brand new Congress, I'm not really fond of them um, because I don't believe any media conglomerate should be backing any type of, like, they're just backing a party. Like, you can't do that. That's, that's so unethical. But what Bernie's doing with our revolution is more multifaceted and more inclusive than anything the Justice Democrats have been doing, and they're supposedly running on Bernie Sanders' platform. Now, in addition to that, Bernie Sanders has his think tank because one of the biggest things that he dealt with last year was, oh, how are you going to make it work? Like he isn't a senator who is mad old and <laughs> like couldn't actually make things work. He is not. But you know what? I got a solution for that. So we're going to create this think tank. We're going to call it the Sanders Institute. Okay. That's a good way to start. So on the other side of that fence. Now, why wouldn't he run as a third party? Why wouldn't he join Draft Bernie? Why wouldn't he join the Green Party? Um, as much as I love the Green Party, as much as I love the folks at Jack, Draft Bernie, uh, shout out to Nick Branagh. Um, the reality of the situation is nobody has set up a legitimate infrastructure for Bernie to be successful in the third party, and that's just the truth. I know it's hard to take in, but once again, talk to anybody who's been in the trenches. Ask them who runs the voting booths. Ask them who count the paper ballots. If it's in a democratically dominated area, it's the Democrats. If it's in a Republican dominated area, it's Republican. There's no in between. It's Democrat or Republican. Why do you think that there were candidates, there were local Green Party candidates in Michigan running locally, who had more votes in Jill Stein, and that was actually the state that she was most popular in. Because they cheat. They just forget ballots. They switch things. Machines are corrupt. Now, I hope one day we can 
I hope when he reruns that he, if, if he uh, wins this election, they, that infrastructure will be set up for him to actually then branch off and become third party. I really sincerely hope that's what happens. But you can't ask. And then somebody had the nerve to say, well, he should have did that, bro. He is doing his duties in Senate. He's traveling the country and the world, talking to us, hearing, out, hearing what the American people want, fighting for Medicare for all, fighting for wage, uh, for, for, for wage increases, obviously planning to run for president. Like, what, how much do you want the man to do? He's 76 years old. Get your ass up. If you want him to run for a third party, do what Nick Brandon did. That's, you can't, I don't fault Nick Brandon for doing what he did at all. He did, because now we know what steps we need to move forward because we are all learning from this process. Okay, next time we have to make sure we have this in place. Next time we need to start making sure that we can start taking over precincts at the voting booth level. Because one thing to talk about the political level as far as green, red, blue, whatever, but now you gotta start talking about those voting booths, who has access to those and who has control of them. Then you gotta start talking about the machines. Then you have to start talking about the voting process itself and how to become more inclusive. You can't do all that in four years. It's impossible. We've looked into it. I'm still looking into it. I'm actively trying to fix all that as we speak, believe it or not. It's impossible. But not only is it impossible to do in four years, I am not putting that on Bernie Sanders' shoulders. The only reason we are having this conversation right now is because Bernie Sanders galvanized us so much to be pissed off at the system. Stop looking to Bernie Sanders to solve your problem. If you wanted him to run third party and do so with the legitimate chance to win, you could have got your ass up with the Green Party, got your ass up with Nick Branagh, and set up that infrastructure yourselves. He is not our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's just Bernie Sanders. He has a life he has to live. He has responsibilities that he still has to carry out as a senator. So if you wanted it, if you want it for the next election, then start it. Not just by having a party, a general party, because the Green Party, as much as I love the Green Party, and they know I do love them, I love me some Jill Stein, I love me some Ajama Baraka. Fundamentally, the system will never, ever be in a, be uh, put Put in this, they will never be able to be put in a situation where they can be successful at the national level until we can fundamentally change that system itself. The people, through voting initiatives, through court rulings, because it's going to take more than just, hey, I think that uh, I want to you know, have run a third party one day. At the local level, at the city council level, at the school board level, things like that, absolutely we can win. But it's not the same. Those machines, not the same. It's, this is reality. I've been there. I've, I was organizing. I was, I was at the, the, I was in New York. I'm asking, you, you know, which I shouldn't be doing, but I don't really care. I'm asking them, hey, are you a Democrat? Yeah, I'm a proud Democrat. Has Democrat stuff all over. How did, you, how did you end up getting, getting put in charge of this? Oh, well, the leader of the precinct put me in charge. The leader of the precinct, the Democrat? Yes, she is. Uh, okay. Uh, well, who put her in charge? Oh, the leader of the district or whatever. Is she a Democrat too or he a Democrat too? Yes, they are. Where do these ballots go after you get done? Because remember, this is New York, so it's straight paper ballots in the city. Where do they go? We don't know. We take them to the other Democrats to count them by hand and hope they get to the right place with the right count. How far do you think a third party candidate will get in that situation? How far? Realistically. In California right now, we have proof, a lot of proof that Bernie Sanders was screwed and actually either won it was very, 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 very close to it. And all it takes is one Democratic precinct, 
with a few loyal Democrats who had a couple of jobs promised to them, a couple of positions of power promised to them. And, oh, look at that. All those boxes of dollars just disappeared. Where, wherever could they have gone? That's all it takes. And that's why he couldn't do it. Just from, like I said, do I wish he would have ran third party? Absolutely. 100%. But I'm also not naive. I, I am a strategist. I've organized before. And it's impossible to win. And Bernie Sanders, I tell you, if you have not noticed from his career, he is all about the W's. He's all about the wins, B. He's all about the wins. I'm cool with that. Like I said, from a strategist standpoint, it's I don't want this 76 year old man wasting his time because he ain't got that much time left. I love him to death, but he ain't got that much time left. He had never given up. For those of you who have not seen that letter on my page that I posted, and I cannot remember for who on Twitter had actually showed me that, but there was a leaked picture of him writing the Secretary of State for Kentucky to ask for a full recount because he knew what we knew. He had been doing his best to fight without giving the opposition a chance to demonize him as much as they already had. For those of you who have not seen it, go to my, uh, go to my Facebook page and my public figure page. It is there. He writes the Secretary of State and says, I demand a recount. They knew. I, I know Jane knew. They knew. But you, it's chess by the way for those of you who don't know says yeah bernie's not playing a game of 3d chess if you knew anything about bernie sanders instead of just making your dumbass assumptions about the man because i hate i really i really hate people who just do whatever they can to demonize such a good person damn what you feel about him politically the dude 76 years old if he didn't give a shit about you he wouldn't be fighting he is broke in political terms when i say broke i mean Dude was worth like $300,000 before the election. That's not the time to start to decide I want to get rich off of politics, people. Let's put some stuff into perspective. If you're going to be a sellout, you want to sell out in your 50s, maybe your 60s, so you can be young enough to enjoy it, you know? Maybe get a nice haircut every now and then. You don't sell out when you're 74 years old. You don't start then. You make mistakes on the way, but you don't sell out at 74 years old. If I said it once and I'll say it again. If you think that Bernie Sanders is a sheep herder, you tell me a lot about where you were politically two years ago. It means when I say that, that's my nice way of saying you have no idea what the hell you're talking about. You just started watching politics so about a year and a half ago, probably around the time Bernie Sanders started getting popular. You're all hurt and in your feelings because you got emotional daddy issues that you have not dealt with personally. You haven't seen your psychologist or your psychologist or your psychiatrist, excuse me. And because Bernie didn't give you his exact reason and break down his strategy one by one by one and make it ABC one, two, three for you. You're so upset because you want to feel included. But that's not how strategy works. We're at war. You think that George Washington or any of the great generals said, hey, hey, everybody, we want to be completely and totally transparent with you. Uh, hey, I want to let you know that uh, we're actually doing a bait and switch. We're going to pretend like we're not running. We're going to pretend like Russia is actually an issue when we know it's a non-issue. All of my supporters, my legitimate supporters, 90% of them know this is bullshit, so I can say this, and they're going to still believe what they need to do because my supporters are intelligent. Why do you think we could out-organize the Hillary supporters? My supporters are forward-thinking. My supporters are about policies. My supporters are about facts and evidence, which is why they became my supporters to begin with. He's, he is a chess player. This, this is not an exaggeration. This isn't me making him up. He doesn't lose at chess. I'm not joking. Not only does he not lose at chess, but as far as politics is concerned, he doesn't run once. He doesn't lose twice. He learns from his mistakes. And guess what? I think he learned some from the Hillary Victory Fund. Once again, purely from a strategic standpoint, 
He learned something from Hillary. He learned a lot. I learned a lot from Hillary. So I know he did. He said, you know what? Hillary Victory Fund was set up four, five, six, seven years ago. They got the jump on us. So what would we do to combat that? And also ensure that we don't have the situation happen last election where all the people who were already elected and were already considered establishment endorse Hillary Clinton or the candidate that comes out next before Bernie Sanders does. Oh, you know what I think I'll do? What I think I'll do is I'll start this group called Our Revolution and I'll do one better. I will put Nina Turner in charge so whenever she comes out and gets to talk about all the progressive candidates from both the Democrats and the Green Party, by the way, they can't say a damn thing. And then whenever our revolution comes out and obviously endorses Bernie Sanders, all of a sudden, he has a pact very similar to Hillary Clinton for America. What they had. So they can try that. They can try that nonsense. But Bernie, once again, is not an idiot. You can't beat them the same way twice. And they're going to attempt to. They're going to attempt to. What else do you do? Well, I don't think the DNC is going to change. He's not stupid. He never expected the unity, the unity committee to amount to anything as far as policies, rules, and things of that nature. But what he did want, he wanted to be able to know what was happening in the Democratic Party. And whenever something significant did happen, he wanted it to make and he wanted it to break into the news. So people get more fed up and more fed up and more fed up. And not only that, but now he knows how the Democratic Party is moving. Because yes, indeed, you are correct. They want him to be a sheep herder. He's just the worst sheep herder in history. He is playing the Democratic Party like a damn fiddle. And if you can't see that, once again, I don't know what to tell you. Like I said, I, 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 I know strategy when I see it because I've worked, I've organized. I was obviously a state director, an acting state director before the witch, the wicked witch of the North Carolina West came in and took over. And we did pretty damn well. He, think about why we're even having this conversation right now because clearly he's a brilliant strategist or we wouldn't even know who the man was. We know that there's a lot of it. Now, because it's not just about the candidates, because now he's going to have a very, he has a lot of, you don't understand. Our revolution had a lot of people win a couple of days ago. And they're about to have more win. So now, the moment Bernie Sanders announces his election, whew, guess what's about to happen? I endorse Bernie Sanders, I endorse Bernie Sanders, I endorse Bernie Sanders, I endorse Bernie Sanders, I endorse Bernie Sanders. Oh, by the way, you want to support Bernie Sanders' campaign? Fantastic. Go ahead and do so. You can maximize your donations to Bernie Sanders' campaign by doing A, B, C, and D. Oh, what a coincidence. Let's look right over here at Our Revolution. You can also max out your donations to Our Revolution as well, very similar to what Hillary supporters were doing with Hillary, Hillary's Victory Fund. So all of a sudden, not only can I max out my campaign donations to Bernie Sanders' campaign, but I can do so in our revolution. If you're not comfortable with the DNC having any type of access to Bernie Sanders' campaign money, it's cool. Just donate to our revolution, and we you won't even have to worry about the DNC coming anywhere near that money. And now I can start organizing at the local levels all of a sudden. Where my campaign could not pay people, our revolution could pay people. What my campaign could not do legally, our revolution can do legally. Oh, what you mean? I, I don't have an idea how my policies will work. Huh. Hey, Jane, come here real quick. Remember that Sanders Institute that we were just talking about? Lay it on them. Oh, by the way, in just, ca just in case you thought our revolution was only talking about candidates, oh no, because guess what they just did? In Kansas City, Missouri, they just got an initiative passed for $15 an hour. Yeah, that was our revolution. In uh, Ohio, they just got, I think it was Ohio, they got Medicaid on the ballot to be expanded. The man knows what he's doing. The man knows what he's doing. It's hard to be upset, to, to think negatively about somebody as far as strategy is concerned. When it looks, it's if, you, if you've seen the big picture, instead of just being all whiny and angry and pouty because you didn't get your way exactly when you went like a child, if you're paying attention, it's very clear 
the man knows what he's talking about. Now, before we go, I want to talk about one thing. This Texas shooting. The Texas shooting was atrocious. But it's, it's really weird because for some reason during Obama's campaign, during Obama's administration, every shooting that happened seemed to happen against either progressives, people of color, obviously things that the, uh, the left would primarily sympathize with. Now, ever since Trump's been in office, all the, the shootings have been against Christians, the right, country music concert goers, things of that nature. That's a little weird. But what makes it even weirder is the fact that the Panama Papers just happened to drop on the same day that the shooting happened. And the Panama Papers, not Panama, excuse me, I apologize, the Paradise Papers, ladies and gentlemen, happened to drop. And Trump's, three-fourths of Trump's staff was implicated in these Paradise Papers. Now, that meant that the whole two days, Trump's staff could talk about uh, this tragic shooting against their their uh, right wing people. Now, here's what makes it even more peculiar. I wish I can find this woman who told me this. She actually told me a week ago that there was a mass shooting that was going to happen, and it was going to happen uh, within a couple of days uh, of that it actually did happen. And the Paradise Papers were announced to be released a year ago. They had made that decision for that date, but the only way that anybody can know is that they had an insider tell them, which always happens. You got people like his commerce, what Wilbur Ross, Trump's commerce person is still linked to Putin and or Putin's son-in-law. Like, I know the whole uh, uh, situation with, the, with, with Trump is for the most part fabricated, but the point, the fact of the matter is, it looks like people are, st like, I'm not even joking, it looks like the government are just using mass shootings willy-nilly now. I'm so, it looks like they're just doing it whenever they see fit and they don't care anymore because they know that will move on. A year ago, they announced the Paradise Papers. On the same day the Paradise Papers are scheduled to drop, this random shooting happens and it's weirdly against conservatives. When have we ever in history just saw situations where a bunch of conservatives on multiple occasions were shot by a conservative? That's never happened. Just like after, right before the Las Vegas shooting, the CEO of MGM sold his majority shares three weeks before the Las Vegas shooting, giving up essentially, for those of you who don't speak stocks and bonds, he gave up ownership in a time where their market was, con their, their stock was constantly rising, which is extremely dangerous to do. Weirdly enough, buys them back because obviously MGM stock dropped dramatically. I don't believe in coincidence when it comes to events like that. And I am a strong proponent of looking at patterns. We know false flag events are real. If you don't, Operation Norwood people, look it up. It's not like they tried to hide it from us. We know the CIA is in charge of a dis, like Brannon is in charge of a misinformation campaign. We know the FBI employed uh, or was training mentally ill people to kill people and cause mass murders. These are all facts. Do some research. Let me know what you think. Thank you all so much for watching this evening. Um, it's been a fantastic time. See you next Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard, 7 p 6 p.m. Pacific. And always remember, ladies and gentlemen, find your balance. Peace.